if you look at the polling data on uh, on global warming, which I just circled back, looked at, it, latest Gallup numbers, only 34% of the American people care about it. It's not a big issue to a lot of people, which is another reason they're circling back to it, to try to make it fun. It's, it's, it's a golden oldie for them. Do you remember, if you are a baby boomer, you remember growing up with the fear of a nuclear bomb hitting your school? You remember when they taught you how to sit under the desk to protect yourself if the Russians launched a nuclear missile at your school? Duck and cover. Remember all of the bomb shelters people were building uh, in their backyards and so Remember how they scared the hell? Now that was real. The Russians did indeed have nuclear bombs aimed at us. I'll never forget what was her name. Laura Dern was on Donahue one after. Literally in hysterics. Talking about people just didn't know what it was like to be a young person growing up with the fear of nuclear holocaust. Yeah, we do, because now they've transferred that to global warming, except it isn't real. But if you remember how frightened you were about being nuked, we'll just transfer that to the youths of today and global warming, and that's exactly how they're pulling this off. Except there's really nothing to be scared of. The Earth is the Earth, the climate's the climate, the universe is the universe, and we are just passing through. And there's not an earthly thing we can do about it. The idea we're causing it's absurd. So is the idea of fixing it that's not broken anyway and nobody can prove it is. I've got to get to the phones. I just realized we're halfway in and I haven't gone there. So let's start in McLean, Virginia. Mike, welcome to the program, sir. Great to have you. Hi, right, Mr. Limbaugh. Last time I called, you mocked me as part of the liberal castrati. And I guess I still haven't learned my lesson because... I'm still struck by the implausibility and self-contradictory nature of your arguments. I've got two examples from what you've talked about today. On climate change, I don't know how all these scientists from the National Academy of Sciences, people that bought us cell phones and the Internet and sent us into space, can be engaged in a 25-year plot to take away our freedom. I mean, if they're that smart, you would have thought they would have changed the topic by now. But well, I you, well, about... I'll be glad to explain it to you if you, if you like. I'd love for you to address it later on, but I really wanted to talk about uh, your first story today. About hey, it's the, uh, about scoring Toronto. money from government, number one. It's about getting money from government, and it's it's about growing government, making it bigger so you can bleed off of it and get because rich. that's what everybody wants. You know, all, all liberals want to be controlled by our government. Well, the people you're talking about, the scientists and all these so-called people, this consensus that exists out there, that's how they get their living. <laughs> by inventing cell phones and sending us into space and bringing us the internet and stuff like that they've increased more freedom they've given us more freedom they've given mo us more independence from the government than inventing they cell phones well, it doesn't mean that they are not little skulls full of mush when it comes to political matters and are and are, are malleable exactly and bendable right. and shapeable exactly. and formable and flakeable you're exactly right on that they are not political they just do the science and tell us what the science says you are the one that's political Al Gore says it's Smith. You got all there these accounts. There isn't any science in it. That's the whole point. It's nothing but computer models. There's no science in it. You know what? what, what why do you scientists. not reject it? Why do you automatically accept it? Just because you're told you're a bunch of scientists, you're accepted. People who invented cell phones. Because I went to engineering they... school and I know what the scientific method is. I know what peer review is. They can't prove it. Not They're... a huge plot. There's no proof to it, Mike. It's all computer models. There's no empirical evidence of anything they're saying. That's why it's always 10 years exactly. from now, 25, 100 years from now, because it isn't happening now, Mike. That's what the talk radio show hosts tell us. That's what you tell <laughs> no, us. No, it's what is. It's what is. Fire, and they are not political. You are, Rush. Did climate scientists invent the cell phone? I'm still confused about that. They, they, uh, what I'm saying is, these are people, members of the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, you, you don't. Get they are a corruptible political bunch, just like the IPCC <laughs> is a politic. Everything you're citing has a political agenda to it, and you're part of it. You, why don't you just admit it? You're having great success with it. If you are an avowed member of the new Castrati, that means you're a liberal and you are part of the agenda, and you're advancing it by hook and by crook. Why don't you admit what it is? Russ, I went to engineering school and I went to law school, so I do both. I'm okay, well, I why is it? Tell me something. And why is global warming political? Why is it a political issue at all? Because Republicans are intent on protecting the fossil industry because 
Exxon Mobil just signed protecting a the deal fossil worth nine hundred billion dollars. Exxon Mobil has a deal worth nine hundred billion dollars with Russia to drill for oil in the Arctic. Nine hundred billion. So you know the sequester was nine hundred billion dollars. So what? We're going to need oil, Mike. That's the only. There is no replacement for it. There's not one drop of anything we can replace it with. But they're drilling for oil. The Russians are partnering with Exxon. They're drilling for oil in the Arctic. So what? That's where it happens to be. Now I just, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I, there isn't anything. We're not close to replacing oil. Not even close. It's going to be, I don't know how long it's going to be. But to these people, oil is the modern evil. It, it just, it's, it, and there's no thinking. All of this is political. They never address the fact that there's no evidence. They never address that the only concern for any of this is predictions in computer mode. Let me ask you, if you're watching TV tonight and your local weatherman told you what the weather was going to be 25 years from today, would you believe it? No. So why do people believe what a computer model says is going to be the climate all over the world 25 years from now? And the only way some people can be forced to believe it is if they politicize it and tailor the message to already existing political sensibilities and opinions. And then get people in groups that liberals happen to approve of, like world bodies like the UN or the IPCC, or the National Academy of Sciences, every corrupt liberal interest group you can, get them endorsing the idea, and bammo, you turn it into a political issue, and it is unequivocally true. You leave it as a science issue, and it doesn't exist. It falls apart. There isn't any evidence whatsoever. And, of course, my big question that nobody, no liberal, has ever called here to try to explain to me, and I've the invitation's there every day, would somebody please explain to me how you know that the climate at this moment is what is natural, normal, was intended by God or Gaia or whoever? If you can explain that to me, then maybe we can talk about why any change from what it is now is a crisis. But why? Who says? How do you know that whatever the climate's doing now is what is normal? Why is this the baseline? And then, after you explain that, you can tell me what caused any of the ice ages. And then, after you explain that to me, you can then tell me why those ice ages ended permitting us to live. And then, after you explain that, I'll give you something else I'm confused about that you can explain. The point is, you can't. None of you advocates of global warming can explain any of this. You cannot answer any of these questions. So it has to be framed as a political issue. And you have to use the usual liberal ingredients of fear-mongering and scare tactics and fascism and totalitarianism and force people and you get all your buddies to accept the premise of something that isn't happening. You start young, you infect and infiltrate the minds of young impressionable kids, you get them scared to death that their world isn't going to exist by the time they become adults, and you got your own little army out there advancing your political agenda, and we're not even talking about science, and that's all this is. Next, you can tell me why in 1979, Newsweek's cover was the coming Ice Age. And then five years later, all of a sudden, I'm watching This Week with David Brinkley, and the hell with the Ice Age, and now we're talking global warming in 1985. And we only had 20 years back then, in 1985. We only had 20 years. If we didn't deal with it in the next 20 years, which have come and gone, we weren't going to be here. And you can explain to me how in 1988 I was told we only had 10 years to save the oceans. Last I looked, they're still there. And there's an airplane in them that CNN can't find. So everything that you people on the left have been saying politically or quasi-scientifically about this is absolutely just a bunch of, of, of BS. Unprovable and only survivable if you turn it into a political issue, as you have, and tailor it to fit your already prejudiced, bigoted notions of your enemies, corporations, conservatives, religions, anything that has to do with God cancels out everything you believe, right? So you got to get rid of that, too. And so it just burns me up that they've got so many young people scared to death that the world's not going to be here when they grow up.
traumatized over this? And they're using fraudulent pictures of polar bears on little pieces of ice that were just made up? Which has been proven, by the way, and uncovered. Look, I'm gonna...